Apparently, some of you have luckily never been put through the torture that is the Tomb of Horrors. I'm gonna explain it to those of you that know nothing about it, or you'll maybe only heard it in Legends, or are going to run it and want some tips. Tip number one, don't. Tip number two, I've run the Tomb of Horrors three, four, I've run this hellhole quadruple times, and the reaction from my players each time we finish it is, huh, that honestly isn't that fun of a dungeon and I'm really happy it's over. Alright, so here's some context. The Tomb of Horrors is an adventure module written in 1975 by Gary Gygax for the original advanced Dungeons and Dragons. Gygax originally wrote the thing for Origins 1, where he wanted to challenge skilled players and foil invincible characters. The plot is pretty simple. A Sarek is a demi-lich who got a tomb full of treasure, so go get it and don't die. Tomb of Horrors was considered the third greatest Dungeons and Dragons adventure of all time by the staff of Dungeons and Dragons in 2004. WHAT?! Okay, now that you have a gist of its history, I'm not really gonna focus on the original. The original is complicated and in a game that I don't know how to play. Thacko? I'm gonna be focusing on the updated version in 5th edition that was released in Tales from the Yawning Portal. I remember back in 2017 when everybody was getting super hype over this book because the Tomb of Horrors is in it. And as far as I'm aware, the version from Tales of the Yawning Portal is pretty accurate to the original TSR version. So, I'm gonna show you what this dungeon really is. Pull away the veil and show why it's not what it's hyped up to be. I don't get why people like this dungeon. Before we get into that though, we have a sponsor. You like dice, right? Who doesn't? Personally, I love my math rocks to be made of something that's unique. Plastic is cool, but metal is where it's at. Hey, aren't there things in D&D that are also metal? Yes, bullets and also metallic dragons. Dragon High Dice, where your metal number generators can look like they've got resistance to acid damage, with lots of different colors, designs, and great prices. Dragon High Dice can be your next set of natural 20 rolling beauties. And by that, I mean these dice are very random and wouldn't be balanced if they rolled 20s all the time, and that would just tip the scales. <laughs> Sc scales, cause they're, that dragon high get yourself some dragon high dice and use my super special secret code xp to level three there's a link in the description below so i decided i wanted to run an experiment i unearthed the old book and adventure sat down and read it did my research and i wanted to run it again and see if i was missing something i've changed parts of it in the past but what would happen if i ran it word for word as it's supposed to be done sort of Gygax said that this dungeon is for players who think their characters are invincible. So I decided to run it for my friends and told them to make the most overpowered broken PCs they could. They were level 20, and we made our journey back into this godforsaken place. If you want to watch the whole VOD of this train wreck, it's up on Arcane Arcade, my second channel where we stream D&D. Now, before we get into breaking down this tomb, let me just say that I... Have a love for these old TSR adventures. I don't have nostalgia for them necessarily because I didn't play the game back then. I wasn't even alive back then. I'm a young boy, but I like the idea of these old adventures being kind of a different game. Ghost of Saltmarsh, for example, is a lot of fun to run for me. There was a different way to write adventures back then, and I think it's fun to kind of translate that to now and reminisce about the past. Now, I'm praising this right now because I'm about to completely not praise it and uh, tear it a new devil's mouth. Anyways, the first room of the Tomb of Horrors is getting into the damn thing. There's basically a plateau with rocks on top of it that are shaped like skulls and nowhere else to go. What the adventure says that they must do to get into one of the three entrances is a thorough inspection and search of the entire area reveals that only the north side of the hill has a crumbling cliff of sand and gravel about 20 feet high in the middle of the hole. And it takes 10 minutes for each character to search each 10 foot white space along the cliff. This examination must be done from a distance using a long spear or 10 foot pole to poke around the sand and gravel, looking for an opening. Any prodding into the cliff face must be sufficiently high off the ground in order to collapse enough material to expose a portion of the tunnel entrance. Once an entrance is exposed, it takes about an hour for characters to thoroughly clear the passage that lies beyond, but a crawl space can be opened in 10 minutes. What I gather from this is that they have to go up to the cliff face and kind of dig around to find it. Now there's three different entrances. One of them is a falling ceiling trap, the other is a sliding wall trap, and the middle is the real entrance. The middle entrance is a long hallway with floor traps whose place 
basement makes no sense and are a real hassle to deal with, there's a chest in the wall on a painted door that's a trap and also a real door. It's a chest trap door, not door, but actually a door. We'll get back to that. A misty doorway that teleports you either into a room with levers or further into the dungeon. A mouth pit of darkness that has plenty of room for those who wish to leap in and be completely and forever destroyed. Okay. There's also a terrible poem on the floor that hints to the rest of the dungeon. We'll also get to that later. First off, 5e has passive perception. So Tyler's character, who had like a 25, was able to see all the floor traps. Not to mention we also had Spencer as a monk, could run up walls, and Colton had boots of flying. So these traps were nothing more than an inconvenience. Now there's two ways to go here, either through the chest trap door, not door, but actually a door, or through the misty archway. Upon approaching it, three stones surrounding the archway glow in a certain order, yellow, orange, blue. If you push the colors in that order and step through the mist, you get teleported to this room way over here. Unfortunately, this color matching Simon Says preschooler puzzle was far too mentally demanding for our heroes, and they teleported into a small room with levers a lot. Willie, you feel yourself walking and walking, and then you feel yourself move and shift. You're no longer in the place you once were. Stead. You are in a small, tiny oh. <laughs> cubicle yeah. with levers. <laughs> <laughs> are you serious? You can escape the levers room by simply flying up and out of the pit. Normally, you have to crawl through like an air duct and then you get teleported, but they could just fly. The other way is through this chest trap door, not door, but actually a door. If the chest is examined closely, the viewer will know that it is hinged on the bottom, as to allow the lid to swing down if a catch on the top is pressed. The catch is an easily seen poison needle trap. The needle sticks three inches out of the wall, and the needle can be avoided easily by pressing the catch with the pommel of a dagger. Disabling the trap by taking the needle out of the mechanism requires the use of thieves' tools and a successful DC 10 dexterity check. See, I like that you can just avoid traps by being smart and realistic, which is what a lot of people give this dungeon credit for. If you're smart, you can beat it. It's not very hard so long as you think. However, I was confused as a DM in this moment. I'm staring in the map going, Okay, so how do you get through this doorway? And there's no description of it in this part of the book, except there is, right here. And then I found out that this map is a piece of shit and sucks at displaying information to the dungeon master. I made a huge mistake, and in this VOD where I'm trying to run it word for word, I ran it wrong, and I've always thought it was like this. Door, chest, but it pushes to open to be a door, which is how it looks on the map. But what it actually is, is this is just a stupid, meaningless trap. And you have to peel the wall on this fresco to reveal a door. How are the players supposed to think of this? First of all, not enough clues for that. Second of all, there's a trap door right in front of it. So they're really not going to think to peel back the wall. Third of all, either I must have a f pea brain that doesn't have reading comprehension, but how in all hell are you supposed to figure this out? I get that the Misty Archway is probably the main way to go, as it's a very simple puzzle, but these guys, who, by the way, have played lots of D&D, &D, we've got hours and hours of stream games, and that doesn't even include our home games, who are also level 20, can't figure out what to do in this situation. It took them an hour and a half to figure out what to do, and I didn't even run it correctly. I made it easier than it was supposed to be. I think that this dungeon tries way too hard to be misleading. You walk in, there's tiles on the floor, you describe frescoes on the wall, there's a demon head in the back and a misty archway. Now the players may think to follow the red tiles on the floor, as they lead to the archway, which is the right way to go, but if you follow it, then you are led to traps on the floor. Also, the floor poem has a piece in it that reads, If shades of red stand for blood, the wise need not sacrifice aught but a loop of magical metal, which is for a room later down in the dungeon with orbs, but twice they are worn of the color red. It leads to traps, and the poem a Sarah wrote describes it as dangerous. And f around with the misty archway only leads you to the tiny room with levers. So if you experiment, punished. if you follow the path, punished. if you try to humor the thing on the wall, punished. you have to exhaust all your options and either push these in the right order or peel the fresco on the wall. A word from Roguish WordPress. All you can do is randomly try things, knowing fully well that in this dungeon, trying things kills. So what you do is take all precautions you can think of and gamble your life away. And that's the fun of the Tomb of Horrors. And this is the first room. There is a single clue that leads you to this. The poem on the floor. If you're a f big brain and you take the clues on an intelligence level that metagames the hell out of the dungeon, 
I suppose it's not that hard and you can solve it. We'll get to that poem in a minute, but first, I need to run through the rest of this dungeon. As it won't make any sense if I explain it now, you need to understand what this thing is. This video is already getting long, and it's gonna get a lot longer. The next room is a gargoyle. Easy to kill, and he's got a necklace on him that leads to more clues that don't make any sense. Then you've got a maze of doors that open up from all different hinges. Then you get shot in this room while you're trying to figure out what the next door is. It doesn't specify how they're supposed to know. I think you're just supposed to describe the hinges and hope they say it the right way. Then you've got the final door with eight studs on them that you have to push from left to right to open. Then the door falls on you. Then you have a room full of orbs painted on the walls with lots of different colors. There's another archway in the back of this hallway, and guess what? It does nothing if you mess with it. Instead, if you go through it, you are teleported to the beginning of the dungeon completely nude. You lose all of your items, equipment, everything. Cruel, but most entertaining for the DM. Oh, f you, Gary Gygax. This one's an illusion that leads to a room with another gargoyle in it that will crush gems in its hand, and if you do it ten times, he gives you an invisible gem of seeing. Okay, that's twice con convoluted. This one's also an illusion that leads to a room with three chests. One chest spawns a giant skeleton. The other has snakes. The last one has a ring of protection that has a dart trap in it. This one's also an illusion that leads to the chapel. The chapel has creepy art on the walls and there's pews. A casting of detect evil and good or a paladin's use of divine sense identifies the chapel as a consecrated place. What a puzzle. Could the Demi Lich actually have been of good alignment? Oh f you Gary Gygax! If you open the pews, gas fills the room. And if you fail a DC 15 con save, you're poisoned for 48 hours. Inside of the pews are 8,000 silver, 6,000 electrum, and 4,000 gold. There's a blue altar that shoots a lightning bolt if you touch it, then a fireball if you touch it again. There's a skeleton with armor reaching towards another archway that's orange. There's no puzzle to this one, no buttons you can push to to try to figure out where to go if you go in it your alignment changes and your sex reverses if you go in it again your alignment reverses and you take 1d6 psychic damage if you go in it again your sex reverses again and you're teleported back to the beginning with none of your stuff wow super fun love it just keep punishing the characters for something you force them to experiment with at the introduction to the dungeon and not just a normal kind of punish i'm going to remove every part of your character and completely change them so that they're just unrecognizable to even you I'm sure this is really fun for somebody to play. If you inspect this random wall over here, there's a slot. If you put a coin in it, it opens. Wow, you gotta be really smart to figure out this dungeon. Next hallways have three doors and three pit traps. At the end of the really long hallway is a wooden door where you can hear far off music and happy singing. If they destroy the door, a minor illusion gives off the sounds of distress. If they head further in, they step on a counterweighted beam that slip and slides them into lava. If you dash or succeed an athletics check, you can crawl back. It's a dead end. If you go down the third trapped pit, which you likely ignored because you expected it, albeit that's kind of smart, but also really misleading, there is a wooden door painted to look like stone. If you go through this wooden door, you're led to a hallway with fear gas, then a room with webs, a couch, and a dead guy on it. He comes to life, says he's a Sarek, and as the DM, you're supposed to pretend that this is the final boss fight. The players can easily kill him, and then a programmed illusion has the whole room feel like it's crumbling and being destroyed. And you have to count down from 10 to 1 as if they're escaping. Then if the players escape, you're supposed to ask them if the dungeon was hard as if they beat it. Alright, so you're supposed to mislead them, then kill them for experimenting, then screw with their characters and reverse their sex, then you take away their stuff, and then you gaslight them into believing that they beat the dungeon because guess what, that's a fake ending. If you cast a spell magic or remove curse right here, for no reason, a door opens to the rest of the dungeon. Then you're in a mummification room with three pots of liquid. One is acid, one's gross water, and the other is gray ooze. If you kill the ooze and dump out the acid, you'll get two parts to a key that you can put together. Guess what? This is how a Sararak reforms his soul into becoming a Demi-Lich. As soon as the characters put this key together, it binds his soul back down, which is kind of clever, yes, but there's no hints to it. The, nobody will ever think that that's what happened. I suppose the Sarenrak wanted it to be 
secret, I suppose, but how dramatic would it be if they put together a key and then all of a sudden they found out they just reformed the demulich they were trying to stop? That would be really interesting. Then there's a pit trap that shoots spikes at you if you try to climb down it. Then there's a secret door that leads you to another door that leads to a pretty room with a heaving floor that will jump and buck up down violently if you roll an odd number on a d6 on initiative count zero. So you're supposed to roll initiative in this room. There's also a fake door that tries to shoot you. The real door is behind a tapestry. If you tear down the tapestries, they turn into green slime. If you burn them, they turn into brown mold. Then you get into this hallway. Holy shit, this thing is so long and I hate it, but I will get into it just for you. There's two pit traps and a doorway at the end. South one is a fake door that shoots you. The east one opens into a room that has a misty room with a siren in it who chats up the party but can't answer any questions and she has no idea where she is. If the players ask her to come out of the room, she obliges and follows them for the rest of the dungeon. Okay. Apparently, this is a private joke for a Sarak. Man, this dungeon is creepy, and not in the spooky scary skeletons. I mean in the kidnapping a siren, muddling her mind, keeping her in your dungeon just until someone asks her to come out and she willingly obliges because she's under enchantment magic as a private joke creepy. Mid-editing Jacob here to also remind you that I completely forgot that this room also completely feeble minds you if you fail an intelligence save. Which brings your intelligence to one you can only identify friends. You can't speak, you can't cast spells, you can't use magic items. You just basically become brain dead. Which is how I feel after making this video. And the north door is a fake secret door. Behind the door is a wall that has a secret door. Real fake doors. Then on the floor, on the other side, is another secret trap door that leads to where you're supposed to go. But this hallway leads into a room that sprays sleep gas on you. Then after 10 minutes, if you roll a 1 on a d4, a steamroller instantly kills anyone in the hallway. Everything it rolls over is squashed to a pulp. There is no appeal. We all die. We all die. You guys walk into the next room. A giant stone juggernaut steamroller falls out of the wall and crushes all of you to death. That's there's it. just no that's save. The end of the game. But there's no, nothing no, else. No save. No save. Just... That's it. That's all it says. All right. Cool. That's the end. It doesn't give you. I out. hate it... this dungeon. Wait. It doesn't give you a save. It no. doesn't give you any. It has... Nothing. It has... Nothing. It has... This is where my group died. Yes, they built level 20 overpowered characters and they just died for being in a room. Albeit, I didn't give them 10 minutes in that room. That's what the book specifically says. I know a bunch of you are going to lampoon me for this, but they did investigate it. They stuck around for a little while. I casually rolled the dice and got a one. And I was like, you know what? I'm sick of this damn dungeon anyways. We can just end it here. Who cares? If you go the fake real fake secret way, you get led to an adamantine door. If you stick three swords in the doors, it destroys the swords. You get led to the throne room. There's pillars that go up to the ceilings, doors in the back, a gem in the corner, a throne, and uh, more of those devil heads. If you touch the pillars, you fizzy lifting drink float to the top of the room and will float to the northwest part of the room because there's a gentle breeze for some reason. In the back of the room are two more devil heads. One sucks anything that gets within three feet of it. It takes your stuff and pops you out right here. This dungeon can f off. I hate these teleporting take your equipment portals. The other one pops you in this room that has a little bit of water draining in it and holes all over so it doesn't flood. Aseric tells you that haha you're trapped and the only thing you can do is open this door and die, which leads to a room with six flying swords and three shields that interpose to take hits from the swords. If you walk in through this way the same thing happens but the purple door turns green and only two swords attack you at a time. If you do it again two more times to get all the swords they get stronger by having a plus one and more one more hit point. If you open this door, it's a dusty room. If you open this door, there's a table with a mummy on it. In its head is an amethyst worth 5,000 gold pieces. And if you take it, the mummy turns into a mummy lord with no spells or legendary actions and half the XP, but is resistant to fire damage because it has a ring of fire resistance. In the corner is a crater with a red gem. The gem lets you cast wish once, but the wish is distorted and explodes, killing everyone in a 15 foot radius on initiative count zero. The throne at the back of the room has a rod and a crown. The rod has a silver and gold end. If you put the crown on, you can't take it off 
off unless the gold end is touched to the crown. If you touch the silver end of the rod to the crown, the wearer is instantly snuffed out, turning into a fetid powder that can't be brought back to life no matter what. If you put the rod into a part on the throne that you have to investigate for, it opens up to a rainbow stairway with a bronze key on a black stair. The mithril door at the top of the stairs has a cup-like depression. If you put either the first or second key in it, you take lightning damage. If you put the silver end of the rod in it, you teleport nude back at the beginning of the dungeon. Oh my god. If you put the gold end, the doors open. If you stab the door, the entire room floods with blood from all those who died in the tomb, and a bunch of different spells will do different things and fix it, which is kind of interesting, but who's gonna stab the door? And now, finally, you enter the fake treasure room. There's a bronze urn with an Afridi in it that grants the party three wishes. I I'm not kidding, it actually does. There's a sarcophagus with a seric written on the top of it. Inside of it is a broken staff of the Magi. There's two iron chests that are triple locked and can't be moved. If you fail any of the six attempts on unlocking them, you are shot with a poison needle that does 12d6 poison damage. Inside of them is 10,000 gems, each worth 50 gold pieces, and 10,000 platinum pieces in the other. But if you get 13 miles away from the tomb, each of the 10,000 gems turns into a one gold piece quartz, and the 10,000 platinum turns into copper. If you move the northwest statue it reveals a ring that opens a chute to the next room this next room is a hallway with a door and a key it opens if you put the first key in it then in the room is a rectangle with another key in it if you put the first key in it it explodes if you put the second key in it three times it opens then the floor rises up. If you're still here on initiative count 10, you just are crushed and die. On the rising floor is another goddamn door in the floor, and if you pull it, it reveals a bunch of treasure, including all the stuff any of the characters lost while going through the teleporting naked portals. If you touch any of the treasure, a humanoid dusty figure appears and dissipates in three rounds if you ignore it. But if you do any damage to it, it takes one point of energy and spells do energy equal to the level it was cast if you give it 50 energy it turns into a ghost however if you touch the skull it turns into a demi lich which is a seric and attacks the most powerful party members first it also has trap the soul which sucks you into one of the gems if you fail a con save and if you smash any of the gems that character comes back and yeah if you kill the ghost and the demi lich all the treasure is yours which includes 97 small gems worth 10 gold pieces each, 3 huge gems, 4 magic weapons, a defender, a sword of vengeance, a berserker axe, and a spear of backbiting. And you can also come up with 12 random potions, 6 random spell scrolls of 5th level or lower, a magic ring, a magic rod, a magic staff, and 3 wondrous items. So yeah, there's a lot of payoff for beating this dungeon. Going through all that awfulness and pain eventually leads to a very sizable treasure hoard that is, maybe to some, worth it to beat this dungeon. However, I still don't find it fun. Every turn and decision you make will often lead you to death or a complete middle finger to your character. I fully believe Gygax wrote this as a middle finger to his players. A way to say f*** you and make them dislike Dungeons and Dragons. If you want to punish someone, play the Tomb of Horrors. If you want to give yourself and your friends a headache, play the Tomb of Horrors. If you want to ruin your campaign by throwing this seemingly legendary hard dungeon into it to challenge your players, but eventually have them all die and your players leave your campaign because that was the worst thing they had ever endured, play the Tomb of Horrors. Oh yeah and the poem. At the beginning of the dungeon, there's a poem that effectively tells you how to beat the whole dungeon, but it's so convoluted that it's nearly impossible to understand, because it doesn't give a lot of details. I've run the dungeon for numerous groups of people who I consider to be pretty smart, and even the smartest of them lost track of the poem. So here's how it works. Aseric congratulates you on your powers of observation, so make of this whatever you wish, for you will be mine in the end no matter what. This is just a Sarek being cocky. Go back to the Tormentor, or through the arch. This refers to the first room. You can go through the arch or peel back the wall. Though the flavor text describes it as a torturer, so there's no clues that it's a tormentor. It shouldn't it be a tormented? Or is the guy on the other side the one who is torturing? He's grabbing at the edges of like a, a of a cage, so this text doesn't make any sense. And the second great hall you'll discover. Shun green if you can, but night's good colors are for those of great valor. This refers to the green devil faces, shun it, and the black orbs that lead you to the chapel. Shun green does not refer to the orbs, as the green orbs don't mean anything. I have to assume that shun green has to assume to the devil faces that you constantly find around the place. Also, 
also one of the rocks on top of the archway glows green, so ice, but it it's never described as green. It's described as an olive hue. So, wh wh what? If shades of red stand for blood, the wise will not need sacrifice aught but a loop of magical metal. You're well along your march. This refers to the red orb as it leads you to the room with the ring of protection, the snakes, and the skeletons. The blood, I think, has to do with the fact that you'll encounter skeletons and snakes. Two pits along the way will be found to lead to a fortuitous fall, so check the wall. The third pit in the room leads to the false ending. This is actually one of the best clues in the game because never in the rest of the dungeon are there two to three pits in a line except for the first room, and the party has to assume they're well beyond the first room at this point. So this clue actually works because they'll check the wall in the bottom of that pit. Oh wait, except that the wall on that pit is uh, painted to look like stone. So on, they'll open it, look down, not see a door, and then continue along, go, I don't know where we're supposed to go. These keys and those are most important of all. The keys that open a Sarah X tomb, you want to hold on to those, because if you lose them, you're f***ed. And beware trembling hands and what will maul. I have no clue what the trembling hands refers to. What will maul may be the steamroller or maybe the entire dungeon. If you find the false, you find the true. I think it refers to the fake ending and all the real fake false secret doors. And into the columned hall you'll come, and there the throne that's key and keyed. This is the throne room with the rod being used as a key twice. It would be cool if there was kind of like a gold reference here as you would only want to use the gold end or, uh, or a warning against silver, like shun silver or something like that. The Iron Man of Visage Grim do more than meets the viewer's eye. Move the statue. You've left and left and found my tomb and now your souls will die. Go left and you find a Sararak. So yeah, the poem doesn't help all that much. It just kind of forewarns two vague things that the players can maybe figure out. So we were in the Tomb of Horrors with my friends and uh, we went through it and uh, it, it took about four hours and they were tired after one hour um, of not figuring out a single room and trying to piece together this puzzle with level 20 characters and they died at the steamroller. So um, here's what they had to say about it. What do you think of this dungeon, uh, Spencer? Oh. Tyler. It's awful. It's awful because it's not made to be fun. It's made just to fuck you over. Yeah, that that that's what it is. Is that it's like it's like how many of the things that happened did we actually have the opportunity to roll for? The hint that you have is like the the night is what you should go to. Night is dark and then you just walk into this little hole right here and you die. Yeah, and you die. It's not fun. So is this dungeon like a gauntlet for tough players like is this like it's like oh if you're really good at dnd no. your character's super powerful is this like a gauntlet for them no it feels no. it, it, feel, it feels more like it feels like it's just like the dm against the players like it has that, nothing yeah, to yes. do that's with that's exactly what it is it's a dm against the players moment that's the entirety of the dungeon so yeah that's the Tomb of Horrors. I think I've said everything I needed to say, and those are kind of our final thoughts on the entirety of this old legendary dungeon. I understand the legends behind it and why it's so renowned, but I simply don't think it should be a dungeon that is sought after to put into your campaigns. Now, I was going to end this video with me going over my version of the Tomb of Horrors, and I'm still gonna do that, but I've been editing for 20 hours straight and I really need to get this video out, so... I will have that video up very soon on my version of the Tomb of Horrors that hopefully you guys can use if you really want to run this dungeon, but put a new, more modern Jacob twist on it, I guess. So, uh, yeah, thanks for watching this really long video, and um, that's the end of the video.